or lease from the in the morning. Remember, remember that Z's not a gender. Hey everybody, welcome to Breaking Better News. I'm your host as always, your friendly neighborhood Simpsons Ken. The yellow-skinned, non-hepatitis-having Max Derrett. And it's good to be with you all again. And joining me for this particular episode, I'm very glad to have with me the pun master and pussycat punisher. I got it! Hannah Wallen. (laughs) Hello. How are you doing today? (laughs) I'm doing well. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing much better than I was yesterday. I had an awesome dinner, and I also get to sleep in a little bit early tomorrow night, which is a privilege that not everybody in the world has, particularly the Saskatchewaners. I believe Allison is one of those, so ha! Oh, you mean uh, the daylight savings thing? Yeah. Yeah. That happens tomorrow. Yep, and all of a sudden, it will uh, will seem uh, earlier in the morning when the sun comes up. Yes. It won't actually it, it, be though. <laughs> yes, it, it, even it's it's uh, it brings more profound joy to my life that one day every single year than it probably should. But I guess that just gives you insight into my personality. Anyways, we're not here to talk about the time and or weather. We're here to talk about something that Hannah actually brought to my attention a couple days ago, uh, which I thought would be interesting. You know, Honey Badger Radio. Uh, a large part of what happens here on this channel is men's rights activism. And I figured, hey, maybe in all the videos that I do, maybe I should uh, do a couple videos now and then on men's rights activism. So according to a study published in the Culture, Health and Sexuality Journal, what we actually have a study that isn't completely corrupted by, uh, y- you know, the, the people that tend to occupy the humanities nowadays, American men are more likely to be satisfied with being circumcised if one holds false beliefs about the benefits of the procedure. Now, in this particular study, 902 U.S. American men were surveyed, 732 were circumcised, and 170 were non-circumcised. The participants in this particular study were given a quiz titled the Penile Anatomy and Circumcision Quiz. This was used to determine whether or not the participants held false beliefs. And in order to strengthen the credibility of their potential findings, the questions were worded in a specific way for the following reasons. So the participants could give objective answers to ensure a mix of positive and negative claims about circumcision and to ensure that the questions about beliefs covered a range of areas like anatomy, medical consequences, prevalence, cultural... You get the point. So the results showed that there was a strong correlation between those who held false beliefs about circumcision benefits and those who were circumcised. One particular quote says that simple slopes analysis demonstrated that as hypothesized for circumcised men as the proportion of false beliefs increased, so did their degree of satisfaction with their circumcised state. And here are a couple of other results before I throw this over to Hannah. 49% of circumcised men, 359 men, reported that they are not confident that they would be able to identify if there were complications from their circumcision. Here's another one. Only 26% reported that they knew the reason why they were circumcised. Now, Hannah, I, I'm going to ask you to like expand upon your reactions to this particular study. Were you surprised by any of this? Well, I can I can tell you at least that I wasn't surprised to uh, to hear this because I've been debating circumcision for um, well longer than I've been involved with the men's rights movement uh, as a as mm-hmm. an MRA. Um, And, of course, you get called an MRA uh, by feminists before you get called an MRA by men's rights activists. You sort of end up – it's a title you accept, not a title that you take on. Um, But this is something that I've been watching happen, and it is – both sexes do it. Uh, It is very common, and it's something that you do it with other things too. If you think something is for your own good, you tend to rationalize away – the aspects of it that are less palatable or less tolerable that you wouldn't put up with if it wasn't for your own good. And so if people are convinced that circumcision is for their own good, if they think it's going to protect them from AIDS, if they think it's going to protect them from cancer and things like that, um, they're they're a lot more willing to accept, especially since it's very hard to quantify the the, uh, result of the loss of a particular type of nerve as opposed to all of your nerve impulses or your nerve endings. And that's something that the anatomy of the foreskin itself, what makes it special is if you take a a fingernail or like a playing card, the edge of a playing card or something, and you you run it across the, the edge of it across the back of your hand, you'll feel one type of sensation. 
Whereas if you run it across the palm of your hand, you'll notice that there's a tickling sensation. And that's a different type of nerve ending that causes that. And uh, the, the loss of that particular type, those, those fine touch nerves, um, that is what is the dramatic change in sensation that m a lot of men don't either don't admit to themselves or they don't notice or, or they don't, um, they're like they'll rationalize it away if they're uh, convinced that they're protecting themselves from, from AIDS uh, by, by getting circumcised. And then some of them will, mm -hmm. will treat it as if it's a benefit because, you know, they, they think they last longer if they don't have that. Um, and they treat that as like the only way they can last longer. So that's, I, I've noticed that with men and women, uh, with women who have had uh, clitorectomy or ha who have had the foreskin removed from around the clitoris, um, those same nerves are present in, in that area. And uh, they'll, they'll say the same thing. Um, well, I, I haven't right. lost anything. It's not that bad because now I'm cleaner and safer and I don't have as many problems. And, and it turns yeah. out it's not true at all. Uh, and a lot of them, when they do learn the facts about circumcision, um, there's a kind of backlash that can happen where they go from not feeling like they've lost anything to being very angry. Of course, because if you're if you learn that a particular part of you was removed for very uh, dubious reasons, reasons that don't really hold any positive benefit whatsoever, at least that's what Hannah and I and other people have been able to deduce. Of course, you're going to be angry, and it's natural that if you are confronted with these potential facts, that you sort of want to shy away from it and you just want to pretend that everything was okay and it was done for your benefit. Because if it wasn't the emotional impact that that's going to have on you is life-changing and it's not something that people naturally want to go towards yeah and it's it's been a challenge um, i've had some people in the movement actually call me uh, a you know an infiltrator and a traitor to the movement and all kinds of things because they disagree with me on circumcision and think that as a woman i shouldn't put uh, promote my views on circumcision but i have the information in front of me i know what is correct and I know what has been what has been promoted that is a lie. And I know that the science promoting male circumcision is no more credible than the science promoting female circumcision. Or to turn and, that and around, the science promoting female circumcision is just as credible as the science promoting male circumcision. And that's the question that I wanted to ask you originally. It's, could you please, because uh, you are the expert with this, could you please expand upon what are the supposed, uh, we, obviously there are more of the religious supposed benefits that come along with being circumcised, but what are the supposed beliefs that are held about the medical benefits of circumcision, well, since this is more of an educational episode? What I've been hit with um, are, the, the primary one that people hit me with is the the HIV myth. Um, the mm. studies credited with finding that circumcision protects against HIV suffered from serious methodological concerns, uh, from serious ethical concerns, some legal concerns. In one study, s researchers sabotaged their own data by making participants sign a contract stating they wouldn't have sex without a condom during six weeks following the procedure. And then that was the time period when they measured whether there was an increase in new infections. Um, and you have to understand, HIV can hide in your system for three years, first of all. So they might not, like if they measured new infections during that time period, those infections might have been two years old, three years old. Uh, they, if they didn't find them during that time period, there might have been infection hiding in the system of the individual that they, they studied. And then also condom use, which, which uh, you know, increased dramatically during participants during this. And this, this was not the only one that uh, they recommended com condoms. Uh, this was the only one that they made them sign a contract. But that doubtlessly affected the transmission rate. So they may have, they may have been um, attributing infection post-circumcision as, as recent when it wasn't. They may have been ignoring infection that existed in these people. And they may have been, uh, most likely were, attributing the results of condom use as the results of circumcision. And then in the, uh, to, mm -hmm. to oppose that, there's, there's multiple studies 
which either did not show that circumcision protects against HIV infection or indicated an increased risk. And in addition to that, um, the Navy found, they did a study, um, and they found, this is guys that are already using condoms, but at the same time, you know, they, they were able to trace back, you know, these guys were using before and using after, or not using before and not using after, but when they got circumcised, it made no difference in the uh, rate of new HIV infection. And uh, there was a Nigerian study that, that showed that telling men that circumcision protects against STD infection may cause overconfidence in its protection and leads to an increase in risky behavior and incidence of infection with viruses like hepatitis C. Now that's treatable, but it's still a danger. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, so this is all like the HIV connection is a myth. It is a medical myth that persists in the medical community. Getting circumcised does not prevent you from getting infected with AIDS. It just doesn't. It doesn't prevent you from getting HIV. Wearing a condom will go much farther to protect you from HIV. And being cautious in your sexual choices will go even farther. And if you combine those two, getting circumcised is a ridiculous measure to take. And that's my other point. Even if it were proved to reduce the chances of infection, the amount that is claimed, it doesn't justify routine neonatal circumcision. The being that there are other more effective ways to prevent men from getting infected, it is unnecessary to damage their bodies in order to, to do it. Um, the HIV argument is is completely senseless, and it is equal for women in credibility, and yet nobody would argue for routine neonatal circumcision of girls. It's not considered uh, uh, a medically possible or medically uh, sound decision to make. It would even be considered sexual abuse. And the only time mm-hmm. it's tolerated is when the victim is a boy. Precisely. And like you said, it just makes it makes moral sense in a way, because it, like you said, we have options to prevent sexual sexually transmitted diseases as well with condoms you can get yourself tested why why can't we allow these young boys these little boys to grow up to choose whether or not they want to either mutilate their bodies or choose these non-painful cheap methods of uh, birth control and std control yeah and and of course you know body modification in, in and of itself is not something that any of us really oppose like if you want to do it because you want to do it that's your choice but that's Absolutely. your choice as an adult. The same as it would be your choice to get a Prince Albert. Um, I, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's it's yeah. a I, I it's not something I would want to do. But that's not my well, body. It's somebody else's body. That's his right to make that decision. And as, as not an adult, something you want to do. You're a woman. No, but I, I don't want <laughs> unless any, it's something you want to tell us. I don't us. want pierced genitals or anything like that. No. Uh, that, mm-hmm. but but I wouldn't stop somebody else from doing. It. That's their choice as an adult, right? And it's the same thing with circumcision. Um, I and and there there are times that are exceptions to the rule, and those exceptions. That's another one that I run into all the time. I get told, well, my uh, ex family or old family member or friend had to be circumcised as an adult because medical reason. So circumcision should be routine. Well, no, I had to be cut for a medical reason. I wouldn't mm-hmm. ever say that that justifies routinely cutting other women or girls. It's I had scar tissue uh, and and it had to be removed because it was causing mm-hmm. a real medical problem. That is an entirely different thing from removing a properly developed, naturally occurring body part that has a function. Um, and this is like everything that that, that it has been argued with respect to um, benefits of circumcision. Uh, phimosis is another one that comes up. Phimosis can be prevented by proper uh, hygiene, and it can be treated yeah. without circumcision. You know, it, it actually isn't necessary. Even in uh, extreme cases of phimosis, you can treat without circumcision. And you know, there are people that have had it for that reason, but it doesn't justify 
uh, you know, saying you need it to prevent it, and it doesn't justify inflicting it on a child. Um, and other other reasons I can think of, there are people who have said they've done it for hygiene reasons. Again, completely unnecessary. You have to wash your hmm. hands after you go to the bathroom. Are you going to cut them off too? You know, um, <laughs> yeah. and it's and, and and then there are people that argue that the foreskin is an unnecessary piece of skin. Well, that's untrue as well. The foreskin functions kind of like an eyelid for for the head of the penis. I actually have something written down here for that one. The foreskin is to the penis what the eyelid is to the eyeball, or the labia is to the vagina. It is the not only the most sensitive parts of the penis with this with specialized nerves. It also prevents dirt and uh, uh, germs and stuff from getting into the urethra that would otherwise get in there. It mm, keeps the head of the yeah. penis from drying out. Um, it also prevents bad types of fiction, or friction um, that, that actually can cause small skin tears and splits and everything during sex. So you're protected during sex from openings being created in your skin that would allow germs in that you don't want in there. Uh, so there's a lot of, of damage that happens with that. Um, Man, I mean, just, just thinking, just hearing you talk about this is just making me cringe. Sorry. You know, it's now, like it's no, 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 no. It's it's important that you talk about. It. I'm just saying, like it's just it's a natural reaction. Yeah. It's like when a another man watches another man get uh, socked in in, in the face, his private oh, parts. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, like his private parts might be on his face, but that, that's a entirely the, the different Balchinians. story. If he gets, <laughs> yes, the Balchinians, uh, Peter Griffin. Um, no, but it's like you, you just wince when you hear yeah. about it. But it's it's a very important topic for us to talk about. And like you said, Hannah, based on the research that you've done and the research that I've done, there doesn't seem to be much of an argument for it, except for religious uh, reasons. But that's something we'll have to get into another, another time. time because we're out of time. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. This is obviously a very controversial topic probably not so much for our audience but for the greater audience uh, that needs to hear about this sort of thing please leave your comments in the comment section below we'd love to hear what you guys like to offer whether you agree or disagree love to hear what you have to say please leave a like it really really helps us out it tells the youtube algorithm that we are worth watching that all of our videos are worth watching and if you want to see more videos like this one please subscribe to honey badger radio we do tons of videos every single week for your viewing pleasure thanks so much, Hannah, for joining me for this particular episode. And until next time, have a lovely, lovely day.